distinguished guests, member of the Canadian Parliament, representatives of the Polish community in Ottawa, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, Szanowni Państwo. Good morning. Welcome to the Siberian Deporting Cross Decoration Awarding Ceremony and commemoration of the 81st anniversary of the first mass Soviet de deportations of Polish citizens to Siberia. Veuillez accueillir l'ambassadeur de la République de Pologne pour Canada, Monsieur Andrzej Kurnicki. Ladies and gentlemen, Madame et Monsieur, Szanowni Państwo. Less than five months after invading and occupying Poland on September 17, 1949, by agreement with the Nazi Germany, the Soviet Union began the first of its mass deportation of the Polish citizens from their homes in the eastern borderlands on February 10, 1940. By June of 1941, the Soviets had sent hundreds of thousands of people in silly frights trains to the network of slave labor camps in the far north across the vast expanse of Siberia and to Kazakhstan. Among the deportees were soldiers and military veterans, clerks, police officers, also priests, forestry and railroads employers, teachers and civil servants, along with their entire families, all of them deemed or so-called enemies of the state by the new occupation authority of the Soviet Union. Many of the deportees died during the journey, while the survivors arrived at the destination to live in human conditions in the camps of the Soviet Gulag. They endured enslavements, suffering diseases, starvation and intolerable oppression. Many perished, thousands never returned to their homeland. In June 1941, in exchange of support from the Western Allies, of which one of them was Poland, the Soviets signed the sikorsky maisky Pact, agreeing to release the Polish prisoners. However, they provided no transportation or provisions, and the prisoners were left on their own to find their way out of the camps, a lot of them women and children. Over 100,000 deportees, soldiers and civilians crossed the vast frozen land of Siberia or the deserts of Kazakhstan, hoping to find a newly formed Polish army. Those who succeeded were then evacuated to seek safety in Polish refugee camps in Middle East, India, Africa, Mexico and New Zealand. For most, it becomes the permanent exile since they could not risk returning to the communist Poland under the Soviet control. The estimated 75,000 children in various Polish centers or orphanages needed instant help after the amnesty, so-called amnesty. In local orphanages, the primitives borderland and utter poverty. There was no food, no running water, and infectious disease were disseminating the weakest children and women. The Polish government in exile asked permissions from the Soviet authorities to leave the, to Iran and India. India, though not sovereign at the time, nor either wealthy nor prosperous, was the first country which accepted the Polish refugees, many of them children. In, my, in March 1942, nearly 15,000 Polish children were sent to India. With Stalin's consent to the evacuation of the Polish orphans, from the Soviet Union in 1942, then Maharaja in Gujarat uh, province established a long, large housing estate for about 1,000 Polish children in his province. He provided them with food, medical care, and shooting. The Polish children reportedly used to call him to the good Maharaja. So in Polish is well known under Dobry Maharaja, if I recall, yes? Yeah. Dobry Maharaja, that's the name of this incredible man who sheltered so many Polish children. The children were later repatriated, but some stayed behind establishing family presence in the region to this day. Szanowni Państwo, today we honor those who remained born in unmarked graves across Siberia and other parts of the former Soviet Union. We also honor those who survived thrived and are with us today. We commend our amazing resilience, dedication and courage. 
We are so grateful to their contributions to building a Polish Canadian communities in Canada, fostering friendly people to people ties between Poland and Canada, and cherishing the memory of the homeland from which they or their families left eight decades ago. Today, eight members of the Ottawa Polish community are awarded Cross of Siberian Deportees. Let me allow the name a few of these to be decorated today. Madame Alice Besark is today with us. Mr. Andrzej Dombrowski posthumously, I understand the member of the family, respectively represent Mr. Dombrowski. Madame Joanna Erland, Madame Maria Gajdecki, Mr. Mieczysław Król, Madame Krystyna Makomski, Makomaski, excuse me, Rafał Przednowek, and Madame Helena Tkaczewski. The tragedy of this mass deportation of the Polish citizens to Siberia during the World War II has remained largely unknown among Canadians. I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to Mr. Chandra Arya, the member of the Canadian Parliament, for the statement made in the House of Commons on May, February 1, 2021, to commemorate the tragic event and bring to the attention of the members of the parliament and the Canadian public opinion. I really, myself, uh, not only congratulate, but I express my uh, sincerely thanks to you and your dedication to the Polish com uh, Canadian community here in Ottawa. I also uh, like to emphasize the families of Madame Alice Besark, her later father Andrzej Dombrowski and her Helena Tkaczewski escaped to the refugee settlement in India. It is my sincere wish also to express our gratitude to the people of India for their help given to the Polish refugees from Siberia who found refuge in the territory of the present Republic of India during the World War II. I also would like to acknowledge that the commemoration of 81st anniversary of the mass deportation of the Polish citizens to Siberia and the Siberia Deportee Cross awarding ceremony has been facilitated by the Canadian Polish Club. So thank you very much for your attention. Based on the decision of the President of the Republic of Poland at the request of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Poland, the Siberia Deportee Cross is awarded to persons deported and imprisoned in gulags, labor camps, detention centers and sites of deportation. On behalf of my father, Andrzej Dombrowski, and all the medal recipients, I would like to thank the ambassador and the Polish government for the honor bestowed upon us. My parents, both my mother and father, would be absolutely delighted to be here today, if only they could. But today, the time has come when we, the survivors, have an obligation to expand our horizons and let the world know what really happened to Poland and its people. I urge you all to write your stories as you remember them. These stories must be preserved, not just for your grandchildren, but for the world at large. Everyone knows what Hitler did to the Jews, but very few people know what Stalin did to the Polish nation. 
almost two million people were taken from their homes and shipped out to Siberia. We were the first to fight Hitler. We were on the winning side of this terrible war. Yet in reality, we were also the victims. And yes, we have been ignored and we have been forgotten. It is up to us to tell the world and our fellow Canadians what happened, when it happened, where it happened, and why. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Szanowni Państwo, Mesdames and Messieurs, Veuillez accueillir Monsieur Chandra Arya, député de la Chambre de Commune. Good morning. I would like to thank uh, Ambassador Kurnitsky for inviting me to take part in this morning. As a member of parliament, I had the opportunity to make a statement in the House of Commons on the 81st anniversary of the mass deportation of Polish citizens to Siberia. And so it is my pleasure to witness today this residence decoration with the cross of Siberian deportee awarded by the President of the Republic of Poland. Uh, in commemoration of your deportation from Poland to Siberia and in recognition of your devotion to the ideals of freedom and independence, I would like to present each of you with a certificate.